Hello, welcome to our the final manufacturing update for the Company of Heroes board game. We've got, um, we're in our last seven to 10 days of manufacturing. We've got, so we just wanted to kind of give you an update on what we've been doing, what we've been changing. We've got some changes we're gonna show you, our final miniatures, um, the final textures on our prints and a lot more. So let's get started. First off, let's take a look at our miniatures here. Uh, we have a redesign of our component trays. This is version two. They're now making version 2.5, and which is pretty much the same except they they've deepened these infantry slots. So these infantry slots are not really like how it's going to come, but we just wanted some infantry slots if people really want to be kind of detailed. But so that they stay in there a little bit better, we, we made them a little bit deeper. As well as we um, really altered the the so many so many cases we really altered the ecc this is version one so we've, we've redesigned this so that the turrets are really well supported and it reduces uh any bending we were originally worried about breaking but as it turns out the the threat is bending so now um all of the longer turrets have a little platform they rest on and it's it's worked out really really well okay so let's as you know if you've been following our updates you know that we have been reprinting the Soviet and the British and the US, and then we just finished our third reprint of the US as we try to uh, lock in and fine tune our shading and our color. And we've gotten it down pretty close to where we always wanted it. Um, we're still, the only thing that's a little unexpected is the, uh, just sort of the general finish. So all of these miniatures, but there, our detail and our functionality is all turned out really, really nice. Um, we're finishing all of these miniatures in a um, post-processing sealant. It's like a, a special treatment they put on there, and it, it's like a protective sealant that also serves as a uh, primer. So all of these miniatures are pre-primed, sort of, it's not a normal type of primer, but it's, they're ready to accept paint, and they accept paint beautifully and we're going to show you that in just a minute but we thought that might be adding to just sort of the the final finish that was a little bit different than our original like pre-kickstarter samples when we were choosing our materials and as it turns out it's just the color um we've got our color improved but as you can see like from of our initial gray samples when we were choosing this particular this is a denser ppc plastic that we're using uh, just so that all the miniatures are just a little bit more solid and, and thicker. They have a little bit more weight to them. Um, anyway, the gray, for whatever reason, just has a little bit of a sharper look. But, as you know, we really wanted to have all of our miniatures be color-coordinated right out of the box without having to do any paint or use extra components. We know immediately that this is Soviet, this is British, this is German. So there's a little bit of trade-off there, but overall, we've all signed off on these miniatures. We really, really like them. The, the detail work turned out great. They're extremely functional. We've added um, uh, turret codes onto the bottom of each turret, if you can see here. So the M10 Wolverine is now matched up to the M10 turret. And that's, so we have a unique code on the bottom of every single turret, just in case you, you know, if you don't happen to have every World War II vehicle silhouette memorized, this is gonna help people mix and match them a little bit better. We don't need them on the Sturm Panzers, but you'll get them here on the, let's see what we have on the Flak Panzer. Oh, Ostwind, so we have it, it says OS for Ostwind. That turned out nice in there, huh? So, um, how do you take your, your miniatures to the next level? It's very easy. It takes about 10 seconds to coat of spray paint. Um, we just use whatever spray paint looks to be the right color from a, like a hardware store. And we're gonna show you exactly how easy it is and, and, the, and the comparison in just a minute. But I wanna tell you a little, let's show you a little bit more about our other samples we have going on here. Is we just so, got, we're just now at the point where we are deciding what type of final finish to put on the packaging, the boxes, the cards. So they all tend to have a really, they all have a very nice, here is some, oh, these are world builder samples. They were just testing out the wrap and how they're gonna wrap these around so that they're a little bit more seamless since this winter side 
is on the back of the summer side. But these have actually already been made, so there's no point really getting into those. Let's take a look at these. So here's a, um, a pre-press print of the uh, building boards. As you can, they've got a really nice, I don't think you're gonna pick it up on camera, which is sort of by design. They've got a really nice linen texture, but it doesn't get in the way. Uh, what we're deciding now is they're gonna put a protective sealant on here, a UV coating as well as a sealant, and it's either gonna be matte or glossy. Anyway, so we've been discussing this, we've got these samples back and we've just definitely decided to go with matte because these are plenty glossy enough. And as you can see, we're very pleased with all of the prints. All the prints have turned out really well. It's taken a few reprintings. Um, that's the reason why we were been delayed this summer is everything's required a little bit of reprint and quality assurance and uh, dialing our manufacturing processes in, but hopefully this shows up on camera. All the colors pop, they're crisp, they're clean, really, really good, and the texture is going to be really, really nice. Let's see what else we have here. Here is the back of some of the commander cards. Same thing, we're using the exact same sort of thicker linen texture. And these commander cards also really, really pleased with it. I'm excited for you to, to feel these. Um, Everything popped really nice, the colors popped. You never know how it's gonna go from when you're designing on a computer screen, even in CMYK, and how is it actually gonna come out when it hits physical ink. So um, our, we're using the same manufacturer as we always have, and they have, they've learned almost as much as we have over the last 10 years as we've they've started to really learn how to dial these prints and cards and other materials in. What else we got here? This is... Uh, some more commander cards. We love the boxes. Uh, I think all the box prints are going to look really great. They're great to see in their final sort of um, print wrap. We're still at the print wrap stage. They had, didn't, hadn't wrapped them at the time of this video because we needed to make a few corrections down here in the legal section. And a couple of the boxes were missing some, some legal text and uh, a corrected logo. So that's why we have these still in this format. But these are now finishing up their final print. Um, as we speak. So they're going to be ready to start wrapping boxes at the, beginning, uh, at the end of next week. And at that point, everything else should be ready to start going into the boxes. So these ones do not have the, we're not representative of the actual texture. Let me see if I can find one that has the, there's a slight linen texture on all of the boxes as well. Um, we're going to go with a matte, we decided to go with matte as well, and so they're, anyway, they're, they just feel very soft and creamy and like all the board games that we really like to play. When you, you know you get that box, you're like, ooh, this is a nice box. Um, we're finally going to have one of those boxes. It's taken, it's taken a decade, but we're getting there. Um, all right, well, I'm going to go out and we're going to show you real quick uh, what you can do to improve your models very, very quickly with even just cheap hardware paint for about five, ten seconds a model. And so we'll meet you outside. So we've tested this with lots of different spray paints. Our early prototypes, we just grabbed whatever spray paint was handy. Uh, this one is Krylon uh, Italian Olive. This is a great one for US. But we've used a different one throughout all our different uh, iterations. And I'll try not to spray John here. So just a quick little spray from a, from a distance. This side. Probably a little too close on that. And then we're gonna pull in because I know you probably can't hear me very good right here. Let's do a little another spray right here. Let's take this guy. This goes right in there. And now let's do a, let's go inside and we'll do a couple side by side shots. Are you still filming? Mm -hmm. So here you go. You can see um, these are pretty good models out of the gate, but with a single coat of spray paint, man, they really start to pop. And they have a really great look here. If you can tell the if you can see the difference there. Mm -hmm. And this is with Italian Alps. So that's our miniatures. Mm -hmm. uh, we've gone back and forth on this a little bit. Your final 
take on, on the, the miniatures? miniatures? Yeah, what's your opinion? Overall, I'm very pleased with how the miniatures came out. Um, some of the textures and some of the overall look has shifted just a slight amount on us, but overall the look of the board game has really come together very well, um, and the detail and intricacies of the, of the vehicles have also come through really well. So overall, I am very pleased, and I think that all of our backers are going to be as well. Yeah, it took me a while to get there, but sure. I'm there as well. I, I love our miniatures. I, I've just so. had to tell you a few times, like, yeah. As we look at them, the more and more I look at them, I'm just very pleased with the overall look of our miniatures and the potential that they have with the pre-coat for paint. Uh, there's just a lot of room yeah. to grow with it as well. But they out of the box, really nice too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of the box, these miniatures look great and I think we're very pleased. So, all right, the big change. Um, do you want to tell them? Want to uh, take them through yeah. it? We're changing the war crate and we hope you like it. We personally, genuinely, really like this Love it. new design. The first one did not work out very well. The tensile strength was just couldn't support the amount of weight that we had going on in the game, particularly across that long of a like horizontal Yeah, it was just space. A structurally unsound. Yeah. I mean, it would yeah. hold together if it could warp and, and, mm -hmm. and bend. So take them through it. Yeah, okay. so you're gonna be reading a lot about this in the update, um, but here is the new um, redesign of the war crate. Um, it's made in a very sturdy plastic. Um, it is also collapsible, and it is, it's awesome. Yeah. And it's got these really, the, the lid locks into place. It's got these nice thematic hinges to it. So we ended yeah. up, there's a lot of style and structural elements here that we think are a pretty good improvement. Yeah. So the new war crate is relatively large. It's 23 inches by 15 by 12 and a half, which may not sound like a lot, but here you can see John holding it, and he's six foot, so it's it's pretty big, but it's big enough to hold the entire World Domination Bundle plus a two-player core set with a little bit of organization. So, And it was very important for us to have a really cool, functional, thematic storage solution for the Company Heroes board game because there are so many products and we wanted a really nice, cool, organized way to keep it all together, keep it organized, and keep it safe. And that's why we didn't give up on it when the metal tin box didn't work out because so the question is is what type of design are we going to go for we've got three options prepared for you one is a u.s crate and it's all u.s themed and it's really designed around a world war ii ammo crate with this distressed yellow and icons and what uh, whatnot around the crate the second option is what we call the allies crate and it's got a panel dedicated to the soviet with this nice big red star this cool British panel, and then a US panel. And then the third option is just sort of a hybrid between the two. You can see all the details and more pictures and what the specific um, stencils and prints and iconography are down below in the update. So please vote for which one you prefer, particularly if you are pre-ordered a war crate. We got, there's a lot of information going on in this update. We'll leave most of the gritty details. Shipping optimization, we've got figured out and solutions for um, the camo paint we had discussed. Yep. Our final ship date, uh, pack date is 9-17-2020, and that's with a five-day buffer. So yep. it was really 9-12. We're moving it to 9-17 just because we keep, I know this keeps getting delayed a little bit more and pushed back a little bit more. Um, but we have a very, 917 is looking like a very firm pack update. That's the day we can go and pick up all the product from the factory yeah. and distribute it around the world. Um, which is kind of a good segue, I guess, into why are we late? Sure. So, yeah. um, the reason why we have late, we're late is yeah. five foot 11 and has two thumbs. <laughs> um, the, as it turns out, what happened is, um, well, for one, all right, we can't put all the blame on you for our delays. Um, as we've been working on the project, we had given ourselves buffers, um, and unfortunately some of those buffers were eaten into by uh, the global pandemic um, and some manufacturing delays and things of that nature. And as we've uh, progressed, um, oh, there have been a few delays, minor, um, that have been cumulative and to where we're at. Yeah. Way to put it. Yeah, we basically, basically we used up quite a bit of our manufacturing. We had a buffer. We're not, it's not our first rodeo. <laughs> we, um, we know manufacturing is going to have issues. So we worked in about a three and a half month buffer into our total schedule, except we used up a lot of that buffer last year with our switch to scale. Sure. We continue to develop and design 
the game, some extra products, but also the mission booklet got mm -hmm. a lot a lot more work so it's oh, not like we okay. squandered the buffer but we spent it on something else sure and we didn't have much left for manufacturing now we could have avoided some of these manufacturing delays if we were in china which is what the plan was we were yeah. going to be there this whole summer which would have really sped up the process there's, we've been waiting on production samples and then we get the final look and we say no we're not quite satisfied with that and there's weeks of delay between those choices and by then they printed a lot of the materials so we're doing reprints and all of that could have been avoided if we were in china right now um, but unfortunately, that was just totally not an option uh, because of the COVID. That's only partly the excuse, though. Okay, I'm not, I'm not throwing no, COVID sure. under the bus. Yeah, and we a don't want to. Yeah, we want to. We don't want to say that uh, the global pandemic was the cause of all of uh, the issues. Um, yeah. But that definitely would have sped up the process. And waiting on these samples, it's a pretty critical part of the process. Yeah, I was, I was pretty. Um, I was pretty quick to use up our buffer because I'm like, I'll be in China. Sure. Right. Yeah. So uh, anyway. Point is, is we apologize for the delay. However, the dates are getting firmer and firmer each time we give you a date. Know. I think 917 is a very firm date, yes. give or take a couple days, because there's not much left mm -hmm. to go wrong. <laughs> like, it really isn't like things are really, the, the check boxes are really getting checked off, and this stuff is done, it's complete, and it's just waiting to be packed up. Yeah. So, um, 917, we also have some estimates of where that puts you as far as getting your copy of Company mm -hmm. of Heroes. Yep, which you'll read about in the update. And man, I'm excited for you to get the war crate. So yeah. the, the Pledge Manager all in bundles, world domination bundles, and a couple other configurations are being packed inside the war crate yes. and, shipped and shipped out like in that. the war crate. Yeah. So that's how you'll receive it. And I think that's gonna be a pretty it's exciting moment to quite, open up that. Quite the reveal. Yeah, yeah. it's gonna be great. So capture it on video if you can. Yeah, and yeah, and send it to us, post it. We're yeah, really excited to see. Um, as a final note, uh, we just want to say thank you to all of our backers and our great community. Right. Uh, we really have um, a really great group of backers, all of you, who have been very supportive. Um, Seriously. Yeah, we, can't, we couldn't have made this game without you. It is not our game, it is our game, and that's how we, we feel about it. Um, and we're just really grateful for, with everything going on, um, that all of you are fighting right there beside us. I know that's that's pretty cheesy, but we really just feel like you're out there with us. And we're just grateful for a great per community. Particularly great community. Yes. Yeah. Particularly positive, supportive. Yep. Really nice. So, we appreciate. Yeah. We so really thank appreciate you to, it. to all of you. Really. Um, yeah. So anyway, we're really excited about it. If I messed up your goodbye. Oh. Okay. You wanna do it? Uh, yeah. Uh, goodbye. Um, <laughs> and we hope to see you in the next update. Cut.